I'm Ole Thompson. I work for a Danish pension fund, and I'm going to talk to you about pensions and climate change today. So you get both something that is slightly boring and something that's really depressing and terrifying in one talk. Now that is a pretty good deal if you ask me. If, uh, if I ask you to say what comes to mind when I say pension fund, I guess the most of you would answer retirement, security, time to do what I want, or maybe you're thinking, ooh, I may want to get on that. All of those things are true, and I think they're key parts of what pensions are about. But to be honest with you, when I go to work every day, I see an incredible opportunity to solve the biggest crisis of our time. Pensions, to my mind, can move the world. Here's why. Climate change and its consequences are materializing in front of us. These last five years have been the hottest ever recorded. This last summer, all of Alaska's sea ice melted away for the first time in recorded history. We don't know all of the consequences, but we know that they will be massive. Nations and cities, from small Pacific islands to Asian megacities and European low-lying countries, could disappear from the map due to sea level rise. Giant swaths of the earth could become uninhabitable due to extreme droughts, meaning crop failures, like the ones I understand that you have had here in South Africa, which can lead to starvation, economic failure, and mass migration. In Indonesia, the government has begun moving the capital from Jakarta, a city of almost 11 million people, because it is sinking into the ocean by up to 25 centimeters every year. Climate change is the biggest risk in recent history. It's a risk to nations, human and animal life, as well as companies. And in that way, addressing climate change is vital to pension funds because it affects our stakeholders, our investments, but most of all, it affects our members. But also because we're perfectly situated to help avert this crisis. Pension funds as a societal institution is an incredible invention. We help workers save up for their senior years through investing in things that often benefit society at large. We manage big funds and invest over longer term than other investors because our job is to deliver long-term security for people through investments. So boring, steady returns over a quick buck. When you walk around and look at big projects like buildings, urban development and infrastructure, pension funds are likely to have played a role in these constructions. And those long-term investments are what we do. Investing in renewable energy, power transmission, and digital infrastructure is what the climate crisis calls for. But back to the numbers. After all, I am presenting you an investment case here today. We're well beyond the point where saving the world in the short term is going to be cheap, in any sense of the word, really. We also know that we are going to experience at least some of the negative effects of climate change in any case. Recently, the Global Commission on Adaptation concluded that we need to invest 1.8 trillion US dollars in climate adaptation by 2030. Think about that. 1.8 trillion US dollars. That's a really high number. I tried to conceptualize it for you, but it's not easy. It's about the same as the global yearly spending on military. And that's adaptation only. It's not money for the energy transition that we also need. But the net benefit from investing the 1.8 trillion would be 7.1 trillion dollars, as opposed to a case where nothing is invested in adaptation. Then try to think about that number. 7.1 trillion US dollars. And really, that is the investment case here. The costs and risks of doing nothing are so great that we have to take action to protect our investments and generate good returns for our members. And our sector has the scale to act. Pension funds in the OECD countries alone, like South Africa and Denmark, manage more than 19 trillion US dollars for their members and beneficiaries. That's roughly the same as the GDP of the United States, or 52 times the GDP of South Africa. I think it's fair to say at this point that the international system has failed in providing adequate finance for solving the climate crisis. You know how every year in December you hear about an ongoing climate conference. They're called UN Conference of the Parties, or COPs. They're building on a big environmental conference from Rio de Janeiro in 1992. Well, that's 27 years ago now. Back then, everyone agreed that action on greenhouse gas emissions and climate change was needed and urgent. A few official documents were even produced then. Since then, we have had the Kyoto Protocol, the Copenhagen Accord, and now we have the Paris Agreement, just to mention a few. 
These have all been agreed with the best intentions, but they are struggling to make impact on the ground for a number of reasons. And while the Paris Agreement has given us a very good framework for action, I think this 27-year-long process shows that good, good political intentions and conventions alone is not going to cut it. So as the international system has failed in securing funding for mitigating climate change, private investors like pension funds are getting more involved. At PKA, where I work, our journey investing in green energy started almost 10 years ago, where we financed an offshore wind park in Denmark. Since then, we have invested in more wind energy, solar parks, sustainable buildings, and climate adaptation. Today, our offshore wind parks alone produce green power for 2.2 million households. We have said no to investing in a wide range of particularly coal, oil and gas companies that we think are unwilling or unable to adapt their business model to the goals of the Paris Agreement. If that's the case, we believe that they have an outdated business model and that they will be a financial liability in the future. All of our sustainable investments are subject to the same criteria as the rest of our portfolio because our main obligation is still to deliver the best returns possible to our members. Today, about 10% of our fund are invested in climate-related assets, and the rest follow very strict uh, guidelines. To us, investing sustainably is not a question of philanthropy. It's a question of good business, it's a question of risk management, and it's on a very clear mandate from our members. We're a democratic organization, and I think it's fair to say that our responsible approach to investing is a result of our members engaging with their pension fund and telling them, us, that this is a major priority to them. This priority is translated into good returns on the members' retirement savings, but it also means other things to our members. It means that we can offer them homes in sustainable and healthy eco-labeled houses. It means that when our members turn on the lights in their homes, it is often powered by green energy produced by our offshore wind parks. You know, the long-term, steady and boring investments. It also means that when some of our work members go to work at a hospital, it's constructed with a focus on sustainability and good working conditions. And it means that we can help with one of the things that our members worry the most about, the planet that their children and grandchildren will inherit. Since we started investing in green energy, many other investors have become involved, and that's great. Building this much green energy capacity is going to require a lot of capital, and pension funds are going to play a key role in this. But as other, more commercial types of investors are seeing the potential in renewable energy, pension funds can move to play a role in a different area. And in particular, in terms of helping facilitate adaptation to the climate change that we are going to see. Financing ad adaptation is by many seen as philanthropy, but I believe there is a very good case for, for investors too. Remember the crop failures that I talked about before. Because the earth is getting a lot hotter, with droughts in some areas and floods in others as a result, the crops that we have been growing for centuries, millennia even, in some places will no longer be able to survive. Take a farmer right here in South Africa, who has been growing wheat for a long time. It's a stable crop, and it's been growing here for hundreds of years. You probably even bought it and used it to bake your own bread. Historically, it's been good for our farmer, but because South Africa will experience more and longer droughts, he will face financial difficulties if he does not adapt to this new reality. Meanwhile, a crop like quinoa, you know, the super resilient superfood that both Instagram and dietitians love, <laughs> that would be able to survive in a new climate and give him much better yields. The problem is that our farmer can't afford to change his production because the short-term costs are too high. Well, pension funds, can through local banks loan him money, and NGOs can give advice on how to change the crops. And that way, our farmer can change his production to a more resilient crop, giving him a steady income and the pension fund a decent return on their investment. This, of course, is a very micro example, but think of how many farmers can be held, how much wind power can be produced, and so on and so on, if we think about the 19 trillion US dollars in the OSD countries. So when you think, think about your pension fund, try to think about the opportunities for people and for the planet that your investments can create. Your boring investments. Pension funds can move the world because they are the sum of normal people just like you and I. They manage our, our money, but part of that is also making sure that there is a world worth living in when you retire. Investing your pension savings responsibly is actually the best way to protect them. 
and the planet that you want to enjoy the time to do what you want on. Thank you very much.